Hi, this is Gabe Alcala here from Advanced Test Equipment Rentals, and today I'm going to show you guys an example of a radiated humidity test. Right here we have our 3 meter GTEM, which we're going to use for our test chamber, and our EUT for today's exercise is going to be this old CRT display. The goal for today's test is to generate 30 volts per meter at 80% AM modulation at our EUT. To achieve that, I'm going to need a calibrated E-Field Pro that's going to be connected to an E-Field Pro monitor via a fiber optic cable. Essentially what I'm doing is creating a signal coming out of my vector signal generator, sending that RF into my power amplifier. It's going to amplify it 50 dB, which equals to 100 watts to go through a low loss cable, then into a dual directional coupler, which I have set up here with a power sensor for the forward and reverse coupling. And I have a laptop, which I'm using as my power meter to monitor that forward and reverse power. As you can see here, at about 100 megahertz, our monitor starts acting up. And as I increase power, the issue only gets worse. For the next demonstration, we're going to be doing a radiated emissions measurement. As you can see here, we already powered down our EUT and placed it inside our G-Tech chamber. So we're going to go ahead and shut the door. Then we're going to connect the G-Tem chamber to this preamplifier via a calibrated load loss cable. And from the preamplifier output into our spectrum analyzer. As you can see here, looks like our measurement is past our custom limit line so we're going to actually zoom in a little closer to see what frequencies we have to debug at. The first thing I'm going to do is press the frequency button, press start, and we're going to change the start frequency down to 10 megahertz. Now I'm going to change the stop frequency to 50 megahertz. And to actually measure the amplitude, I'm going to press the marker settings button go to the next page and find the auto max peak and looks like our spectrum analyzer is measuring minus 24 dBm. Our next example is going to be a setup for conducted emissions. Our EUT for this example is going to be this LCD monitor which I'm going to connect the means power line onto our single phase listen which is going to clean the power and it's also going to have a port to couple off the RF disturbance that your EUT is causing onto your power line. And I'm going to hook up a spectrum analyzer to this listen via the 50 ohm monitor port, but you have to make sure you include a transient limiter since you want to protect the input of your receiver. For this example, I have it set up to read the RF disturbance between 9 kilohertz and 30 megahertz. Now the first thing I want to do is offset this 10 dB transient limiter on the spectrum analyzer. And to do that, I'm going to select the amplitude button, followed by more, RF offset level, and type in 10 dB. Next, I'm going to change my frequency band and make it start at 9 kHz and stop at 30 MHz. And finally, I'm going to change my bandwidth and change that to the EMI filter. As you can see here, we have uh, spikes at about 50, minus 50 dBm. For our final test, I'm going to show you guys how to do a conducted immunity test. For this example, we're going to be injecting RF from 9 kilohertz all the way up to 230 megahertz onto our EUT, which is going to be this monitor. The monitor is going to be plugged into a listen, and a signal is going to get generated from this TESSEC NSG4070 coming out of the RF out port. It has a 75 watt built-in amplifier, which is going to amplify it up to 48 dBm. From there, it's going to go into a 6 dB attenuator then into our bulk current injection probe. Downstream we have a current monitoring probe which actually is going to measure how much RF interference is riding on top of the means power. And we're going to measure that off the 4070 as well. 
The first thing I'm going to do is press the setup button, then go to power limits, and I'm going to add 30 dB of additional attenuation since I have a 30 dB attenuator onto my channel 1 power meter. Next, I'm going to change the max amplifier output and the max RF output to 48 dBm. Now I'm going to go back to the main menu and I'm going to press power meter and ensure channel 1 and also the amp are both turned on. Back to the main menu, I'm going to go into generate mode. I'm going to select the sweep button and change the frequency, start frequency to 150 kilohertz and the stop frequency to 230 megahertz. Now I'm going to go back, back again. Now I'm going to change the modulation and turn that to AM modulation. And right now it's set to 50% depth and an 80% duty cycle. So that's fine for our demonstration. Lastly, I'm going to change the level to minus 6 dBm. I'm going to go ahead and press the amp on button. Then press the run stop key. As you can see right here, it's taking 1 megahertz steps until it hits 230 megahertz. And as you can see here, the screen begins to flicker at about 20 megahertz.